<laughs> All right, so welcome everyone. We are at a finance budget meeting uh, did, uh, March 11th, 2020. I'm going to hand it over to Finance Chair Elizabeth Cyprus. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to this special budget workshop. The meeting was added to our budget review schedule in order to have the level of discussion needed while meeting our obligation to present the FY21 budget to the Town Council in mid-April. So thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. Um, all budget workshops are open to the public, recorded and posted online with public comment followed. The school board will open and close each meeting with opportunity for public comment. Questions and comments may be sent to me, Elizabeth Seifries, via email as well. Please go to the Town or School Department website, navigate to the school board section, and click on an email link to send your thoughts to us. I am still going to read the entire thing that I read every night, although I will, um, I'm going to truncate the strategic plan goals tonight. Um, the school board's goals for the 2020-21 budget are maintain and improve the high quality of education for every student, Number two, careful examination of line items and consideration of the success and effectiveness of expenditures in order to provide a fiscally responsible budget. Number three, support the 2020 through 2025 strategic plan goals. Those are posted online. Number four, clear and continual communication throughout the budget process. And I'm going to move through those goals. So we hold these goals in mind as we examine each cost center, each department, each school, and each program. As we move through each step of this process, we must also keep in mind the ongoing building committee conversation about the necessary improvements to and possible replacement of our buildings. So just a quick recap, at the end of January, each of our administrators and directors gave an overview of his or her department or school, which included cost center information, staff and program reviews, and new staff and program proposals. At our second workshop, business manager Marcy Weeks gave us an ED-279 state subsidy update, and then we began hearing answers to previously submitted questions. Last week, we for the most part, I believe, finished up at that first round of question and answer. Um, I think there were just a few little things outstanding. And then we took a deep look at enrollment and staffing. Tonight, we will receive updates, if any, and discuss the undesignated fund balance. The board will then have discussion and give guidance to the superintendent about revision to the spending increase. At this time, the floor is open to any members of the public that wish to speak. There's no podium really to step up to, but fine. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> Would any members of the public like to speak? Okay, seeing none. Are there any updates? Well, to date we are at a 7.995% increase over the FY20 budget. Um, we Let's have. See, do you mind giving us there an accompanying chart that goes with that? Which I did. Yeah. Oh. That'll replace, I think it's the first sheet in tax and funding impact. Um, as, as you know, we have um, included in this budget a 10% uh, health benefit increased placeholder, not knowing what our um, final uh, increase will be. We have been in touch with our main um, benefits trust, main education association benefits trust, and asking them when they would, um, when they expect to release their range, they always release a range first of health benefit increases. And they reported that they hope to release the range on March 20th. So they thought if the range was say from three to eight, we could drop the amount that we have um, in there to an eight percent increase. So, um, and then um, they project that we will have our individual district increases now later than April 1st. So that's where we are right now. So later on in the evening, um, when we're talking about 
on designated funds and when we're starting to think about um, giving the superintendent some guidance around um, a revised budget. So if you're looking at that um, spreadsheet, it's called Budget Tax Implications FY21 Spreadsheet. It's my favorite spreadsheet in the whole budget. If you look at the top right-hand side in yellow, you'll see that 7.95 is the current spending increase over last year's budget. And then if you look down to the bottom, you'll see what that translates to as far as tax impact, our portion of the tax impact. Um, and for a long time, you know, people didn't understand why those numbers are different. They are. This is, they're based off different things. That's the simple sort of non mathy way to say it. So um, what we really will be talking about later on is that top number in yellow. Um, so I think there were a couple of outstanding um, questions from last time. I think somebody was wondering, Jason, um, something about foreign language. Kimberly, I think it was a, a follow-up question. I don't know if you can remember what you were. I don't recall what the question was, but I think you had, there was information that we could come forward yet that you were leaving them. Sure, I can look that up. I think I shared this. Uh, did you know what we're talking about? Because I don't yeah, know I what I'm talking it. about. So maybe you can tell me what I'm talking about. Well, let, me <laughs> that, let me take a look. Would you like to address that right now? I would love, like, yeah, if yeah. we can just kind of pick, I think there were just a couple little... So there, yes, the last time there was, I'm going to find it here, there was a question about world language, and I only, I didn't have enough time to get that information right. from the okay. department, and so I included that, and I forwarded it, I think, to Donna and to you. I should, we shared it, I believe, but let me see. So then I will apologize because I've no, been away okay. from my email a lot. Um, let's see. I think it's quite lengthy. Let's see. Okay, so would you like me to, I'll, I can read the question and then kind of try to tease through. That would be, yeah, summarize okay. it. That would be great. So this was, my understanding is that when we started introducing world language oh, to yeah. lower grades several years ago, this was accomplished by reducing the number of times per week that Pond Cove students met with foreign language teachers. If this is the case, how do the foreign language teachers evaluate the change? Does this sufficiently support our goals in world language and new strat strategic goals around our global competency? So, let's see. I, if I could just quickly see if I can pick information you out of this for you. Um, I'm going to go in and try to make sure I have that and I'll share it with the board. Okay, so yes, and, and forgive me if I didn't share it with you, I, I can reshare it too. So it looks here like um, Marsha Chase, who, who wanted a little bit of time to consult with her team, and then she got this response to me. Um, she's talking about um, she's talking about guidelines, national guidelines, and it says they recommend a school year schedule of three contact hours over a five-day period to reach beginning language proficiency. And at this time, Pond Cove would require funding for additional staff and changes to the allied arts routine in order to meet that goal. So right now, what we have is, um, so they're saying three contact hours over five, period, five days. Right now, we have in an hour and 15 minutes over six days. So we're up into two visits. Right, it's a 45 minute and a 30. visit and a 30. Mm -hmm. So we're you know, about halfway there according to what this says. Um, and it just talks about the importance of frequency and regularity in the schedule. Um, so that's the answer that. Mm -hmm. In, in their opinion, according to these guidelines, that no, we're not doing what we would like. Thank you for finding that information. Yes. And I, I didn't see it in the email. Just I'm so sorry. No. I, I thought I shared Google Doc, but I might have put, put the wrong address in something. So 
I will share that. Great, with you. and I'll share that. Okay. Can I just add to that? Because I was just reviewing the uh, board meeting when the Foreign Language Department came to speak to us, which I think is also interesting. As a, um, as a department has grown in Pond Cove, it started with just fourth grade. And then I think in 2000, they added third grade. So it was teaching fourth grade and third grade. And now they have all the way down to first grade. So little by little, the program is expanding and growing. It is. And with hope over time, <laughs> the time that students actually get to spend with the language as well as with growth, is my understanding. Yes, and I, I do say, I will say too, that mm -hmm. just full disclosure with um, where we are just doing the hour and 15 minutes every six days. Yeah. Even doing that, I have to keep after Marsha because she works a little bit too much. I have to make sure she's actually taking her lunches and taking, so yeah. she's stretched really thin to do the hour and 15, so mm -hmm. that's something that I observed. Thank you. Um, so looking back, uh, Noel gave us a, an updated proposal renamed Double Robotics. There was another question on the list for you as well. I don't know if you saw that. It was about the cost of maintaining the iPad, so we have a ratio of two to one in K through two, and one to one in grades, grades three and four. And the question, so there was a question of cost of maintenance, and then is that ratio necessary? How are the iPads used in the lower grades? I don't know if you. I have that here. Yeah, I, I sent. Uh, not asking you for it to answer it, and I, I sent it, but just to go over it. Um, oh, so here it is, right here. <laughs> iPads are are. Uh, iPad 2s, they were originally in the high school and they have moved their way or ventured their way down to the, uh, the elementary level. Um, we, the cost per iPad is $6 a piece per year. Um, so if there's 100 students in second grade, it'll be $600. So, and, and, uh, of course, there is uh, also some, quote, Hidden costs, if you want to call it that way, we have manpower to, you know, put them into the MDM, take them out of the MDM, re reassign them, retag them, and so on. So, which is a huge effort, uh, but uh, that's basically what the costs are. As far as um, what they're used them for, um, Tom uh, Sheltre would be more qualified for doing that. But one of the things that they do is they really do start looking at Google um, Docs and spreadsheets and starting to prevent, um, prepare, prepare them for middle school, okay? And that really starts at first grade. Not so much, just recognizing, you know, doing this basic naming, this is what a spreadsheet is and this is why it has squares and so on and so forth, just so that they can recognize that. Jeff is not here. I proposed this kind of privately to Donna because I didn't think Jeff was going to, I didn't remember that Jeff was going to be here. My question was a, a little more specific. If we look at his um, proposal for a French teacher, and hopefully someone can pass this, you can pass it on to Jeff and we can get, a, get an answer about it. Um, so if he has it proposed at a point four, and so I just want to, yeah, and maybe Sonia can help. <laughs> so um, my understanding was that we were going, to, that the hope was to add one section of French one. And so I didn't know how that correlated with the need for a point four FTE. I mean, it's, it seems like a bigger position than the job requires. Correct. We might have to get that answer another time. Okay. Well, this may be a question that could be answered without that. But um, are, is certification different at high school? I'm, I'm wondering if there was a language teacher added, could that perhaps benefit Pond Cove? You know, if, if there is a, a, 
there is a need there if you know, things are stretched then. Is certification different for high school versus elementary school? It's K-12. Yeah. K-12 mm -hmm. for all languages. Tricky. I was going to say, how would that no, logistically I'm just, work? I'm just thinking that oh, it seems like a good idea, but on many levels that Difference in period time. It's quite complicated on yeah. many levels. A high school language teacher and an elementary language I'm going to touch and see if I can get an answer. Yeah, logistically. I like the thinking out of the box. Creativity, for sure. I think we've even seen that with our EL teachers needing to be broken up to two different positions because of that difficulty. Well, and I could speak to that just a little bit. I mean, I don't have an answer, but there, there are more pieces to the puzzle where we do share, we currently share uh, middle school teachers a little bit. Uh, I was like, isn't there a shared to tradition? Ask you all. So yeah. there is some sharing going on, so perhaps the, school, the result right? could be additional shifting and it could make sense, or, you know, like high school, middle school, middle school, Bronco, something, I don't know. But I think it's... It would definitely be a conversation. We'd have to see how that would work, but I mean, certainly. And then you'd have to, and then it would be a scheduled conversation. I think schedule's the biggest thing. It's I, a high school yeah. schedule moves. I appreciate the question, but it's sort right. of overshooting to ask. It's a great, it's a great thought, great question. I don't know the answer would be take some folks sitting down and thinking about what that would look like. Um. Were there any other outstanding questions, little hanging threads to pull off? See if, see if Jeff answered. It was just a, it's not a huge question, but it was just sort of like, didn't, didn't compute. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, Kind of one other topical, you know, we've had a kind of topical nights about ED 279 and state subsidy and how that works, and another one about um, staffing and enrollment and how, you know, those are our big budget drivers and taking a good look at that. And then um, one last kind of topical thing that Marcy, Donna, and I all felt like we need to talk about is the um, undesignated or unassigned fund balance. So if you flip to that new chart that Marcy just gave us, it's in the Funding and Tax Impact tab, it's the Budget Tax Implications FY21 spreadsheet. And under Revenues, you go about halfway down, you see Use of Unassigned Fund Balances. Or balance. So my understanding of what the unassigned fund balance is, it's essentially what is left at the end of your budget year and that goes into a fund and it's it's you can't you know you it's different the uh, town council has one as well and there's there's a big misunderstanding so i'm going to talk about it now it goes into that fund at the end of the um, fiscal year and when we are budgeting this at this time of the year only we can use some of that as a carry forward to help bring our tax impact down. But at no other time of year can we draw on that fund. It is not the same as a contingency fund. We have a line for contingency that is different. This is kind of a, a bigger safety net that we have used over the years when we have had really major cuts in state subsidy. However, because we had three years in a row of enormous cuts, we were, it was like, you know, 900,000 the first, I mean, it was, all, you know, we, we've had many, many three years in a row of major cuts. And you can look here and see that, you know, we have used a lot more than we are this year, for instance. I mean, there, there have been years that we have used We've used, I mean, it's, it says what we've used and then what, how much more, I mean, we used 
800,000 mm -hmm. one year because no, we had I brought this for you guys. Awesome. Too. Let's do that. This is from our auditors and it shows that we're saying yeah. graphically. It I mean there are there are years when we would have had to make major cuts to staffing mm -hmm. and programs had we not been able to draw upon this mm -hmm. undesigned fund balance in our budgeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That the major cuts, I remember the conversation said that the Cape Elizabeth schools mm -hmm would not look the same. No. There would not be foreign language programs. There would be not be technology. I mean, it would have been a very different. It would have looked completely different when you lose close to, I mean, we lost close to a million dollars two years in a row, and then we lost another 500 a year after that. Things were rough. And um, this, the board, and there are different people on the board, but the goals have remained pretty steady. The board and the community really don't want to have the sort of schools where we're, you know, we're gutting foreign language and music and arts and that sort of thing. And so we were lucky that at the time we did have <coughs> funds in our unassigned fund balance to use. However, we are on the other side now where our unassigned fund balance has gotten pretty low. And we, we need to sort of have a prudent approach to helping kind of refund this. And um, so you will note that this year we are using $100,000. And that, you know, we are trying to use less and less over these, you know, over the last few years. We're trying to use a little less because um, there's a legal limit, first of all, to the amount of money we can have in that unassigned <coughs> balance. It is 3% of our full operating budget. That is the ceiling. And um, I'm not an expert, um, but I've been, this is my third term on the board, and I usually listen. And every year I've heard auditors, I've heard business managers tell us that it is prudent to have 1% to 2%. On you know on reserve and we're not there and we need to be working back toward that. So um, that's just something for people to keep in mind. Laura, can uh, can you refresh my memory? I remember we had a conversation about the unassigned fund balance last year and what we did with those unassigned funds. Did we give money sort of back so that the tax care impact wouldn't be so high? Am I recalling this correctly? So we used 300000 of our unassigned fund balance last year to help ameliorate our tax impact. Right. But anything, once you do that, it's sort of, they're different. We get, if we get more from the state, let's say, that um, higher than projected, there are different mechanisms between um, the board and the town about how that money gets used. Mm -hmm. um, typically, a lot of times the, the town has said that goes straight back to the, the taxpayers, even though it was earmarked for education, whereas uh, we have advocated that it would go into the undesignated fund balance. Right. So um, we need to kind of on a yearly basis revisit that agreement, mm -hmm. but um, we didn't use it. You know anything extra or different? That that was just the number that we landed on last year. Three hundred thousand is what helped us get to a five point nine percent spending increase and a four point two nine percent tax impact. Mm -hmm. so, so where's the designated fund balance in the budget? What percent are we at today? We are well exactly right now. We are at an audited fund mm -hmm. fund balance of two hundred thirty eight eight one four, but it's really restricted right now because we, that's all we have, and we budget three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So that's why our for this year for this year. current year. Okay. So that's where we are right now with our fund balance is two hundred thirty eight mm -hmm. one four exactly, okay. and we have budgeted three hundred thousand. So the additional money that we received in the state recently, the seventy five thousand five six two will make up that difference for us to get us to 300. So we won't be in the red. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if, if we have the 300, just so you can do the math, thing. so then what, because you, you were saying it's prudent to have one to two percent, so that would be? Um, well, three percent right now on our overall budget would be $800,000. Mm -hmm. So I didn't calculate in the one percent, but if you, you could take that in half, it's like, so you're looking for under $400,000. That would be, I think the ideal, 
discussion we've been from Dom also, it's a good thing to take the relief off the taxpayers. We've not had any huge amount of your fund balance, but a lot can be used with that little amount capital mm -hmm. reserve fund to be restricted to the Right. Well, things like that. And, and keep, you know, additionally adding to it over here to have a little bit more for capital reserve. It's yeah. sort of tricky. I, I mean, so, and this is, again, I'm not an auditor. I don't work in the financial industry, anything like that. I think that it's tricky. It's tricky to try to, I think, build it up to that, close to that 3% level because I think, and I've heard this from taxpayers, it's sort of like, well, that's our money. You know, spend it or give it back kind of thing. And then, you know, I, I think that it needs to be at a healthy level. And so, again, you know, I've heard over the years from many, many auditors and business managers, you know, 1% to 2%. So I guess, you know, maybe we shoot for like 1.5%. And, and, you know, as we aim to try to get that fund to be healthier again and make sure that we're not going, you know, we're not, you know, hanging onto the side of the table hoping that we don't go into the red, that we have a healthy fund balance. Mm -hmm. A one percent would be two hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Okay. Yeah. So it's on the revenue on side. On the revenue side, side on this sheet right here, well, it's considered. It's not in the expenditure budget, so it's, it's in the revenue right here. budget. Okay. Only on the uh, revenue side. So it like mixes all the revenues here, make up the total expenditure. So like right, but I mean, we're saying we're budgeting 300, but we're showing spending one. No, last year we budgeted 300, this year we're budgeting one. Right, so I see. our current budget I see. requires 300. That's why we're trying to, um, and we appreciate everybody being fiscally conservative this year, trying to get back up to that 300 so that we're in good place by the end of the year so that we have our full 300. <coughs> and the hope is to get a little more going into the new year to have 100. So if we have the 300, you're saying we would have like the 1.5 percent in reserve, which would be between it the one and two percent that that. Already. It would cover what we budgeted. Right? Yeah. So, okay. And I think we would like to, sh to shoot to have a little bit more in reserve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because last year was the first year in quite a while that we had an increase in state subsidy. This year we have we still we have a, a small increase, but still a, you know an increase. That we're we're close to level. Um, you never know what the next year can bring, and so it's just it's prudent to have a healthy fund balance. And I think that's a really good point too, because I think the good news is is that that's probably where you want to be budgeting at that level. It's uh, a scarier picture where you have to go up to this yeah. level. So B at a fund balance amount is a healthy that's a healthy budget, you know. The one to three hundred thousand budget. You guys have done a good job working your way down to a really healthy point. Use of the fund balance. Yeah. It looks like hope is what do you think? I was just I was gonna ask a question. So it is for for Laura's benefit because I know she has this question. <laughs> <laughs> We're asking for a friend. Yes. Okay. It's asking for a friend. So this is just—it's—it's uh, it's basically it's a shock absorber. Is that what I'm trying to understand? We don't—we never touch this money. We can't accept when, because of the fluctuations in state funding, it allows us to be to not be so whipsawed mm -hmm. with our own. Okay. It's, it definitely helps. You know that big swing in tax impact. I think one of the desires that I have. Um, is that we could have a little bit more predictable, you know, tax increase. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we are really at the mercy of the state funding. So having that shock absorber, as you described, right. is useful. But, you know, since we're on the other side of having had to use it to a, such a large degree, we now are tasked with making sure that we can build it back up for yeah, that eventual sure. swing. Right. The pendulum so, just so it's there. You know it's going to swing it's yeah. decision. So we we may absorb um, outrageous swings in state funding, but we're then going to protect our taxpayers by having this fund to sort of hold okay. on. That's that's and what we try to do. It's what we have done over the years, and I think it's responsible of us to to do that. So and then this. 
maybe somewhat unrelated, but so the undesignated fund is a fund we use for emergencies and if we do something egregiously wrong and, and we have to go out and fight it to get funds. And and how much do we put in the undesignated fund and what's the proven amount? Well, we there. can't use it in an emergency. We can't touch it. It's not a contingency You're fund. You're thinking of a contingency fund. Or capital. I meant, I said undesignated. I meant, well, she's not saying unassigned. She's saying undesignated, unassigned is the same. Those are seven. So, the okay, contingency so fund. Contingency, contingency. Oh, contingency. Right. Contingency. Okay. We have a contingency okay. line of one hundred thousand yes. dollars. That's what Phil's looking for. I got it. And okay. it is in here, it's and in you here. can find it. It's cost center um, nine zero five. Nine zero seven five. And what percentage should that be? While we're at it, I don't know. I think so. I'll tell you that when I first got on the board, it was thirty thousand dollars. Oh, that's a little low. It used. It it, it went nowhere. It, Saved us from nothing. Yeah, that's and um, over the years, through various superintendents, and various board members, really advocated strongly for having a, a better cushion in there because the contingency fund is what we can use in so an emergency. No generally accepted accounting principles contingency fund uh, balance that we, we follow. It's just right. finger in the air. Okay. So what happens? We did look at other school numbers. departments. So yeah, right. most of the time you see about a hundred thousand, two hundred fifty thousand. We look at if other school more departments, than that, then that means that they're not using the money where they should be using it. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens if um, we exceed that amount in any given year? Just following that. That well, then that's what will affect your fund balance at the end of the year. The auditors will do the final audit and they'll I say this hypothetically. Oh, you went over fifty-five thousand in all of your articles. And now uh, your fund balance has had to absorb that over which is the state fund. What's kind of I think that there there's usually wiggle room built into the budget as far as when um, positions are budgeted for um, Sometimes there's savings when someone is uh, leaving or retiring and we're replacing that position with someone who um, is at a, a lower position on the step scale or something like that so we have those savings but then you never know maybe the person that you know we have someone that leaves and the, we have to hire someone, have to hire someone and they might be more expensive and so yeah. there's always a little bit of um, that sort of wiggle and wherever we can find savings those savings also can get moved into the, the fund balance and whatever we don't use of the contingency fund, if we don't, that can be moved into the, the undesignated or unassigned fund balance. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Last year, we put 300000 into the undesignated unassigned fund. I think this is my understanding. Oh, we are the we're short, and mm -hmm. so the 75000 that we found for the principal agreement students is going toward that so that we don't go into the red. Was that all the money that was in the contingency fund? There had to be, so then where is this 100000 No, we still have the contingency fund. There's still fund. Oh, no, this, a it, right, backup, right? Yeah, right? That we didn't tap into to use right. for this year. Right. right. And okay. how much was that in? How much is this 100000 for this year? Is that all of what's left? Or if we take 100,000? So right now we're at, our fund balance is 238,814. Audited as of June 30th, 2019. Mm -hmm. So we needed 300 for this. And the plan was that 238 should have been 300. But there were some circumstances that need to be taken care of. Right. So then. So that's now, the, so that is representing the three hundred we needed going this year. Yeah. So now we have our three hundred good news. Yeah. So by the end of the year, theoretically, we should have our contingency, our contingency account just stays intact. Yeah. Well, as long as the heater doesn't. As long as someone. I don't even want to say it out loud. Yeah. But as long as everything goes well, we should have. A hundred thousand dollars from our contingency account, and whatever else. And whatever else, best case, anything else in there that's under budget. Good. 
So what oh, is I see. It's the money that comes from under budget. Right. Okay. That's Essentially, the, it's the money that comes from. Yeah. Me. So we don't have that money yet, but we're we're trying. To we're trying. We try to get it. Five hundred thousand. Continue. We do still have the money. It's sitting. We have that. Right. But I think it's we haven't touched that. Two different funds are. Yeah. Because, so yeah. at the end of the year, it moves from contingency to unassigned. Correct. That's the key best that case. Best, best case. Best case scenario. Best case. And then best as we go forward, forward yeah. if we're not pulling as much out of there, it can just grow a little right. more. We over the years we have we yeah. have been able to do that, and it we had an undesignated fund balance or what do we call it unassigned. It, it changes from business manager to business manager. Same unassigned. Unassigned. Undesignated. Um, at one point it was 1.2 million. We needed to. We had to spend it right. down. By law, we, By law, had, to, we had to spend yeah. it down, and so we had to spend it down. And then we got some major hits from the state, and we had to spend it down even further. So now we are where we are. And now so, we are where we are. Right. Can I ask this imaginary scenario? At the end of the year, we have an extra hundred thousand in the contingency fund that wasn't spent. It gets moved to the to unassigned the fund balance. Yes, right. Right, and let's say that we only wanted to spend 50,000, 500,000. No, 50,000, right. sorry. 50,000, right. numbers confuse me sometimes. 50,000, and so then we would just have 50,000 right. left over that can be built up year after year. Exactly. Okay, I got it. You got it. Thank you. I knew that, that refresher course is good. Never heard, it's never heard. It's complicated. So, this 100 is kind of banking on the contingency as well as anything that you know we were able to be under budget on. Which and know. how likely is it that we will have that money? Well, um, I had a conversation. Crystal ball. Yeah, very good. I talked to our auditors this morning. Um, I always like to call our auditors. I mean, the faces are so excellent that way, and they feel confident with my projections, my numbers. I, I've talked over with them. I'm meeting again with Jen either the end of this month or next month because this is the biggest concern, the biggest project that I have to keep tabs on, right? So they all feel confident that if we keep going at this rate, that we'll be able to keep going back with this effort. And again, thank you, principals. I'm looking at the principal. They're very concerned, fiscally concerned, and understanding with that. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> So that's the goal, and we're in the right direction, and I really feel like our auditors um, are behind us with, with all of the numbers and the data and food services, the projections are looking mm -hmm. good. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, so I think there's also a level of um, fiscal conservatism being practiced throughout the district at this mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. um, to meet this goal. Well, which was, Marcy was alluding to. Yeah. Thanking everybody Thank for to help to help with this. So, so it's looking mm -hmm. good. It's looking good. Sort of a, it's something that that um, we need to pay attention to. It's mm -hmm. it's it's it has a big impact, even though it's not staffing and it's not enrollment and it's not you know books and desks and that sort of thing. But it. Um, this fund has been something that we have been able to rely on in incredibly stressful times, and so I think it behooves us to. Yeah. Well, if we didn't have that hundred thousand in there for next year, things would not very impact on the taxpayer. Would be right. right, right. Even this year, right. even though you know we had a very small increase from the state, which we're grateful for, um, but as we have heard, we had um, you know some. Enrollment surprises at the high school, we, where we had, you know, made some staffing changes, and so with there, there are some needs throughout the district, as well as just you know the straight rollover of um, staffing and benefits. So, and I, I want to also have that when I talk to other school districts, they have done the same thing that we're doing, which is a very it's a slow progression down, so it's not a shock to either side, mm -hmm. and this is a really smart and intentional way of working our way back up to building the number up here. Mm -hmm. But just working our way down to the smaller percentage of using the budget is a really smart thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like um, a smaller percentage gives you a lot of control. 
you're more on top of it. And then, you know, if, if the hard times come, you have something to rely on if you can care for. Right. Anybody have any questions about unassigned fund balance? Good discussion. Thank you, Marcy, for putting together all this data and the chart. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. Um, and we know that it, it takes a lot to sort through everything and tabs on this. Thank you for talking to the auditors on a regular basis. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So they're like best friends. So um, that's sort of the end of our topical part of the evening. And um, at this time, it's probably best that the board, if the board wants to just start having discussion. Um, how do you feel about you know where we are? Um, if you want to take a look at the, we just got a new updated new program position proposal tonight from Donna, and then we can also look at the um, back to my favorite spreadsheet. Looking at you know this, the our historical spending increases, which would be the end of the conversations and not the beginning. No, and then at the bottom, if you look at the um, tax impacts, so it just kind of help people start formulating what they would like to talk about because sort of the end of this conversation will be us giving some guidance to the superintendent about a revised budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see there's a 70,000 or so difference. Oh, so that came from me having to um, go through and make sure that those numbers were all accurate from okay. the first time I went through it. So, as you all found in the first document, I had the nurse as full time salary mm -hmm. and, the, and benefits. And benefits of, so, kind of a mess. But it's clean up now because I had a second set of eyes helping me in from our meeting. So this, this document just gets a list. And so this document, yeah. 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 and is that why that the uh, spending increase went from 8 point whatever down to 7.9? Okay. Thank you. So I always ask, are there updates? Our benefit All numbers weren't correct yeah, for the uh, yeah. uh, high school teachers to the part-time high school yeah, teachers. So. So last time that you announced that about five teachers were retiring and worked how many years they were in the service and how does that address how do we compare to the new hire we're gonna make? Is there gonna be a difference there? So we can't predict who we're going to hire, so that's really difficult. Um, for teachers we usually uh, Hire, most of our teachers have master's degrees, and we usually look at from seven to ten years experience, so we, we project that into the budget. Um, it could be somebody that doesn't make that much, or it could be somebody that's a little more. Um, but we try to keep that in mind um, as we're going through this. Um, for some of the other positions, um, it's based on their contract. Um, and what a person would make coming in, which would be different. And again, we don't know, for example, the uh, transportation scheduler, we have no idea who we're going to get for that. So we put a placeholder in there, or make a prediction on what we think someone might come in at um, as far as job, uh, years of experience. Um, but it's, it's, just, it's just an estimate. So the estimate is even now? Not we usually, we usually make out, okay. Um, no, it will probably, um, when we look at somebody who's been in the district for a long time, 
um, they would be making more than somebody that probably that we hire um, that, that comes in new. So, but we put that adjusted figure into the budget. Okay. So, so those have been put into that, the budget, yes. That's what I was question. Thank you. Um, Donna, the, um, the uh, retirements that were announced last night are all reflected in what we're yeah. able to replace. Yes, and you know that Troy will be down a teacher, and so we've taken that out. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. Thank you. So, I had a question, and I don't know that we have, I kind of know that we don't have the answer, but I still want to ask it which is looking at the um, facilities part of the new position proposals. Um, most of those are shared between town and school with maybe just one fully designated for the school. And are we able, and I know this is so tricky, and I'm sorry, but I have to ask it. Oh, no, I know, I know. <laughs> How can we reflect the reality of what the town, so basically we get a, like a reimbursement or a transfer from the town for the, the share of those custodians, we'll say. And um, it's part of the one town concept, it's, it's kind of confusing that we basically hire all the custodians even though they don't necessarily do all the work in our buildings, they also work in um, the police fire station, they work in the library, they work in the pool, and they work in town hall. So, so is the re reimbursement 50%? Or? I think there, there's a percentage of reimbursement, and um, the state is very interested in what we spend for our schools, and they want to report on that. And right now, it's very much together with what, the yeah. town, what we spend with the town. So, Marcy and John are working um, on hard. coming up with percentages. Okay, so that's And they'll be collecting us. data on um, you know time um, the custodians spend working for the town, working in the schools. So. Yeah. Um, but it's really, it's very mushy now. It's hard because, I mean, it, yes. so it's, re it's reflected in our expenditures mm -hmm. completely on our mm -hmm. side, and then on the revenue side, yes. you, take see, revenue. you can see that we have a, a transfer. Yeah. Town reimbursement for cleaning right. Um And I think that it's going to take, it's going to take some time to work out what really feels like an equitable, um, percentage for that reimbursement because at this time people really don't know mm -hmm. what that's that time split is and so there is a proposal that they would just I mean not necessarily punching a clock but starting to just keep track oh, probably over a year because you know with yeah. events and different times of the year it really you know there's a difference in, in how they staff and, and work in the different buildings but just start to keep track of, you know, how long they're spending in the pool, how long they're spending in town hall, how long are they at the middle school, and just document that over a year. So, so that the town reimbursement is more accurate? Mm -hmm. That's the goal? Yes. 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 Right now it's at about a bottom line, 13.42% for categories of custodians, maintenance, technology, and human resources and counseling. That's our reimbursement. Yeah. Yeah. Marcy? Yes. Under revenue, there it says town reimbursement for cleaning services for technology service HR assistance. Mm -hmm. If you go all the way to 2020, 2021, and even 2019 and 2020, how come it's all zero? So it looked like in years past, what they did is they used the transfer as a revenue, and then they switched two years ago and used it as an expense credit. So the state would get full expense reported, and then to keep your budget down, you have the transfer coming in, hitting the expense line as a credit. Whereas before in the past, it was used as a revenue. So it's really... Um, John, I see it's up above. Yeah. So it's just so a it's reporting. Just a, it's just a reporting change. I see it's up above. Yeah. It's actually, it's the past three years yeah. that John it's been shifted there. John and I have discussions about the best way for the school side. We really want to... You want to clean and you yeah. want yeah, everything being reported okay. in the right line. So that's how it says that is a direct entry transfer at this point, and the money goes against the expenses. Got it. So 
decreases the expense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's been very hard to decide on the percentage and the <coughs> document is, um, and then, you know, John and I have both gone back and forth, but ultimately, <laughs> I think, <laughs> but are we going to have to wait one year for them some, to document? For some good data. Right. It's almost like developing an indirect cost plan, which is really complicated, and you want to have concepts. So it's not necessarily like you would really want to have that full type of indirect cost percentage. The, the tricky thing is, too, is that we also share um, supplies, mm -hmm. yeah, right. cleaning supplies and bathroom supplies. And so that's snow removal. Yeah, snow removal. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to say there, there are all there's all sort of like there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to do with um, town side people doing some maintenance on school fields, which I like to argue are community fields, not just school fields, but you know wherever that goes, it goes. But um, so there's you know there's a lot of I'm sure everything's really mingled. Mm -hmm. On this sheet, is it back to the point you are referring to facilities and to Marcus's point? So, are we only responsible for 50% of that? No. No, no. Right now, we have more than that in our budget, and probably more like 70, 75%. So, is that number that's, that's the salaries, does that reflect 75% of the school budget on there? Yeah. Or does it reflect? The town as well. Is that, those, those are 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Those so it should be minus Wait, 25 No, because this is the expenditure, the revenues. I mean, I don't know how you want to show it because we do have to pay this out and then we get reimbursed. Right, so um, until. I'll have, so when, we get, when I get the notice of what the final positions will be, this is how it will look. I'll put, I'll add the positions to our facilities department, put the total amount in there, and it's then a net number would be after the transfer. After, yeah. So that will be reduced eventually. Exactly. Eventually, yeah. but we have to show it yeah. as an expenditure. Yeah. We have to show the total expenditure because the expenditure comes from us. Right. So, right. so it will be a bonus at the end of the year. <laughs> so, and the reason, um, I mean, I know it's not exact, right, that we're trying to get the data to be clear, but the reason that it's 70% school and 30% town, part of that is just the schools are a bigger entity, and it takes more effort to clean the schools, so that's why it's not 50-50. That's what there's, no one knows why, but that's that's the why reason it's been like yeah. this in yes. the past is what yeah. I'm right. saying, that's why this is coming, and that's why we want the data to see if that's clear or if it's a little bit off. Oh. The yeah. interesting thing is that we've had this conversation in um, budget subcommittee or finance right. subcommittee, and no one knows why those percentages were picked. Right. No one can, there is no justification. Mm. Uh, there, right. there could be an assumption about the schools being bigger and more than him, but that is that is not documented anywhere, and no one says that. <laughs> there, it's just this is how it is. How long have we been doing it? Forever. Since I moved here in two thousand four. No. Yeah. 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 And it. I think that there are great benefits from it, but I think there's also kind of we need to figure some other things it's out. It's tricky for me to count. It's yeah. very, yeah, it's very yeah. tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, in our state report, I have no idea how much we're spending on our schools. We had to report out on, and we, we couldn't report out on cleaning supplies for the schools. Mm -hmm. We can't. So that's that makes it tricky. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, when we, Present our budget to the town council. All those expenditures are in ours, or have you netted that out at that point? Um, the, the netted them out at that point. Okay. And my dream is that we, uh, in the next couple of weeks, that maybe one of these positions would be, I because I, my understanding is the town is considering their budget too, and this would be that they would have one. But right now we have a hundred percent more. Okay, but it does get netted out. So in other words, whatever percent. Right, whatever percentage of the rest of the 
So, for instance, Perry will have has presented all of this on on the town side as well. They're aware that he's asking. They're aware that uh, whatever the the current negotiated percentage is, that we'll have to. They're going to have to. They're going to have to. Transfer that. Right, and ultimately affects the entire mail rate, so what they're considering to be mm -hmm. in, in entirety. Sure. Okay. Yeah, it is so true because you have, you know, in voting, you have in the schools, right, to town events or even, you know, right. just, just keeping track of where a custodian is working, it's not going to quite get to there. Or, no, right, it's tricky. You know, yeah. I have some more questions for Laura. Um, <laughs> 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 That's right. our Correct. portion of okay. Right. So it's right. not an increase. Okay, so that's right. that's a little and confusing that's because that's we're right. yes. and yes. what I will yeah. point out is that um, so our portion gets put together with what the town is doing, and then they, there's some magic, mm -hmm. and I'm not kidding, mm -hmm. and it involves like the home like homestead exempt and all this stuff, and then it somehow magically comes out lower than that. When it yeah. goes to the taxpayer, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be careful when you look at this and think that that's a, a direct line yeah. to the taxpayer yeah. because it's not. And it gets put together with what's going on on the town it's side. Totally right. So we, we have very little control over how that. Like our, we have control over this yellow number. We do. Right. right. So and whatever we do to the yellow number, it will change the green number, mm -hmm. and then yeah, it goes over to the the town side. And I, I honestly have no idea. I don't understand how you know we had whatever tax increase from our side last year, and but as a homeowner, my tax increase was lower right. than that right. because of whatever magic happens right. in town hall. So <laughs> I have some follow-up yeah. questions. But so then, at the top line is it's the budget for the year and then the change from the last year. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. each year, I see we went up, you know. 3.2%, 2.4, 2.1, and then last year was 5.9. Do you remember why? Was it, is that because it's the state, state. funding? Or what? It was, that's our funding. Needs assessment. Okay. Which is 250000 that we don't have in the budget this year. <clears throat> okay. So no needs assessment, but this year our proposal right now is 7.95. Okay. Original ones. Right, which was the beginning of the conversation. Wait, the needs assessment was how much? Two forty-nine. Remember what the original ask was last year? That's right. That's my question. The, the yellow one was last year. So we had an eight point one percent. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. So we we added it five point nine. And we ended up. Yes, yeah, so we came to a meeting similar to this, and the board said you need to keep it under six. So. Was it two point two point nine dollars? I thought that was like your original, and then was last year was one eighty three or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I think you're right, Kimberly. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was closer to two. It was closer to two hundred. It was, but that because they had brought it down. Right. You're right. Right. Because we were the first time. It's still not in there this year. Right. So mm -hmm. taking out the rough needs assessment, it was four point six. It was, it was four point six percent. So it was three two two four two one four six seven nine five. Right. And. Well, and at the beginning of the conference. Right, and we also still have a 10% increase for health insurance, and we're oh, hoping we get a ceiling soon where really that would be great if it was mm -hmm. at a 7% ceiling, and we could take that down for the insurance cost. That's not a huge Last year we went down to 8%. Yeah. We yeah. dropped it because we got the ceiling, and then we yeah. were able to drop it a little bit more than that. When do we get down? Our April 3rd is our final. Oh, final, yeah. Right. Okay. And, and how do we as our yeah. placeholder? Yeah. Oh, you can use that. Oh, so for me, uh, just one more question. Um, 
<laughs> it's all going somewhere because I'm trying to get to a single concept. Yeah. So the 2.138 million change this year, um, I don't know if, you, I, I think in past years we saw what percentage of the increase was contractual, contractual 83 percent. 83 percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's my favorite number. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's, so the wiggle room we have is really only 17% of, 17% of our staff that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. All staff, like, mm -hmm. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it actually got to my question. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're budgeting some reduced revenues here. Facilities rental noise. Yeah, I took it down because I didn't, I, my projections show that that would be a little bit more realistic. I see. Um, but that would be good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that sort of thing. But in the end, like Nasser said, we are going to try to find a percent increase that feels reasonable and um, with the hope that it actually comes in lower when we, we um, have the final numbers from health insurance and, and other sort of unknowns that are out there right now. Um, but again, it's, it's respect to our administrators that they will um, collaboratively, could, long day, collaboratively come together and figure out how to do that. And that meeting will happen on Tuesday morning. <laughs> okay, great. So I have some more questions. Uh, or just observations. So we, uh, you said it was 83% of that number is salaries and staff and benefits. benefits. Right. So I did, I quickly did the math, and I did that say 83% of 2.1 million is 1.7 million, and that roughly works out to about a 6.1% increase. So that's sort of the floor. I mean, it's, it's, it's the that's, the floor that's with new positions new position. included. Right. The so new positions uh, we, we haven't we haven't even, I mean these are all new positions. Okay. And so I'm sorry, I thought that eighty three percent was eighty three percent of that number is existing positions or that's the budget is saying also for so so we're going off of this year. Uh -huh. So this year eighty three percent. Um of our budget this year, at which point is I salaries see. and benefits. So we don't know what it is next year because we don't know what the final. I see. Okay. So then, then right people yet? Then. Well, that's what I was trying to get to, and the math didn't make sense because I, I wanted to see of the two point one million increase, what what part is locked in? It, it, and we don't we don't know that. Yet. It's usually around that eighty three percent. If you look okay. back in the history of the eighty so then so it's around so then, six percent. So I around six percent. So I did that and then I said, okay, so the difference is three three hundred and sixty three thousand is this other piece. So then I would go to this new position request sheet and it's got a total of nine nine hundred thousand. So I don't know how go ahead. I, I think I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, you're so it's not exact and let's say hypothetical. Oh, Regularly, typically, it's around 83% contractually every year. Mm -hmm. Even though what we're seeing here is the number for this current year not projected. This mm -hmm. whole thing is projecting what people want So, in, for next year without making the cuts yet. So this, this, this whole thing right here has the new positions in it. I see. So the 2.1 so, includes new positions. Right. Yes. So... That 2.1, perhaps going back to Elizabeth's example, like we may not believe that all of these teachers are here mm -hmm. or are, are, are necessary, mm -hmm. right? And so we can go below 6.1% because mm -hmm. that is sort of sending the message of like, yeah, we can't do all of this. Mm -hmm. We would like to, but we can't do all of this. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that. And the reason we added it tonight is so that we have time to, for them to do that work with whatever spending increase we would like them to come back at or, or near mm -hmm. and bring it back to us and show us what it means, what the decisions are. And then we all together have to decide that that feels okay or no, that doesn't feel okay, that was too far or not far enough. We have to have time. It seems like when we decided on the 6% last year, that that was a number that in the end everybody was comfortable with. It seemed like the town, the taxpayer, they had a smooth budget process and that was a good number. So per, perhaps we follow that same path this year or what are your thoughts on the rest of the board's thoughts? I, I feel like it was, um, it was an exception because we were doing the needs assessment, and um, so I I would suggest we we look to go lower, also with the knowledge that probably we're going to have a big ask of the town, you know, for something to do with the yeah to do with the buildings. Because in the future it's going to be higher, so then we go lower this year. Is that what you're the bonds. Well, no, the bonds. We're going to. Yes, yes, yes. 
So can I speak to something that Hope was saying? And um, you were doing a little math over there, and I don't re remember exactly what you said. But I think that you, um, I think you came up with a really interesting point that is worth verbalizing again for the public to hear. When you take that change of two million one hundred blah blah blah, and you take eighty three percent contractual, it left you with how much? Uh, three hundred sixty three thousand. Okay, so that's the non-staffing mm -hmm. wiggle room if we take on all this responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I think the the point that I want to make is this budget isn't that super easy to shift. It's very lean. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the ask from the principals and the administrators is above and beyond. There is not a lot of wiggle room to shave things off, right? Because if you are, if you give these teachers positions, right, and there's other needs around the schools that need to happen, there, there's just not a lot of room to cut. Um, so I just, I, I guess I just wanted to point that out, that it is already very lean. Um, and so some of these positions, teachers' positions, probably will have to be cut. Um, because we can't. New position. New, new I'm sorry, I want to clarify that. Thank you, thank you. Some of these, because that's what I'm pointing to, new positions here. Proposed. Not the, the new. Oh, okay, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you for the corrections, because they're super important, though. Well, yeah, we don't want to panic. I don't want panic, no. and and so I will say that again. Yeah. They're, they're just proposals at this time. They're, they're just proposals, and people. they're new positions, um, and and we may not be able to fulfill some of them. I think even though I would, I'm going to speak for myself. They all sound wonderful, and yeah. I would love to be able to provide them all. Um, but we have such little wiggle room that we may not be able to provide all those new positions that don't exist yet. So if six percent is is too high because that was comfortable last year, but last year we had the needs assessment. So if we sort of remove the needs assessment from the equation, you know what percentage do we land on? Five point seven five. Where would we have? Hope you did a little math. Where would we have been last year without those needs assessment? Um, no, but four point six. Yeah. Oh. We, well, and we also had a high um, oh, um, un unassigned. And yeah, we had a we, we, we had brought and we brought over three hundred thousand out of the unassigned funds last year. And, and now, now we need to be able. able to and now we need to be more conservative about that. Yeah. So then, taking into consideration the unassigned funds mm -hmm. and the needs assessment, what percentage are we looking at? Yeah. Without without hopes math. Without <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Well, because really it's like a 400,000 difference. Right. It's not just yeah. the needs assessment. We're yeah. also reducing the uh -huh. unsigned right. funds, so we're sort of double hitting. Right. 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 I guess not double hitting. We're gaining by not having needs assessment, we're losing it. Yeah. So we're kind of equal, I guess. It's like, yeah. mm -hmm. So then it's the six. Taking our medicine. Or it's the 5.75. So we're Is it um, prudent? I believe we've done this in the past to give uh, a few options, like a few target points, oh, okay. and okay. say what would it look like okay. if it was five point seven? What would it look like if it was five point five? And what would it look like if it was five point two five or even five? And yeah. see, I, I feel like there was we've one year that. in the in the past that I've been on the board. That it was so obvious, and the teacher, that, that might have been the year that the principals came up to us and said, if you want to go as low as, I'm using 5% as an example here, your schools will be different than the townspeople expect. And you are our example getting rid of this program or, or knocking this out of. So well, if we can give a few. And that was the same year that we got major cuts, too. We were exactly. absorbing major cuts. No, I'm just. I, but it, it seems like uh, because six was something comfortable last year, but now that we have the unassigned funds that we need to build up, and but we don't have the needs assessment, is the highest point that we want to be 5.75, or perhaps could it still be six? So I also like to look historically, Laura, and historically we are in the three, two, and two. Yes. Last year was, as I will say, to underscore other people's points, an aberration. Mm -hmm. okay. So average. 
Uh, I don't know how we, how are we, how are those numbers so small knowing what we know about, because we're using all the unknowns. So we're artificially, there's no way, yeah, there's no way we can do a percent without cutting things right now. Just and I'm not advocating that we're in the threes or the twos. I'm okay, just, so I'm saying that six okay. may have been comfortable last year for whatever reason, but. And okay. I think, I don't know. I think okay. that we ended up in the 3.2 because we use that money from the yeah, continuing uh, fund balance and same with 2.4 in um, okay. 2017, 2018. So they were much, much higher. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so we can't get there, but my, maybe yeah. this is too high. My feeling is I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't it, it doesn't make sense to me to just pick an arbitrary number that we think sounds good. I would say, logically, I would say we want to go, we're not making any cuts, there's no reason to make cuts. You know, Right. When we look, talk about proposals, they're not cuts because they don't exist yet. We, we already know we're underfunded, so we at least have to maintain the status quo, staffing, and, and we might budget-wise. So if what we take that and we add some teacher increases, what's that? What is that percentage? And that's our floor. That's what I, I would say. So, so without any new position? Just, and I'm not saying that's the target. I'm just saying. We, I but would, if we just if roll I over six, it. if that number is six and a half, that's ridiculous. I don't want cuts. That's not. Yeah, not our intention, right? So I would that's say usually something we can figure out if we just roll over with adding no new positions and no new programs. Just I ran some numbers and the flat percentage um, with no increases, no percentage increase for um, contracts. It would have been around a four point three percent increase. For or are we holding it flat to what this year's increase is? Mm -hmm. So that's oh, 2.75. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah. And that was 4 something? 4.3. It was just so it's just so hard right now. Yeah. Okay. But that's the straight roll. So, yeah. yeah. so, so many things have been So that's our that's our floor for sure. Okay. So we already know that. We don't have to explore that one. Right. Do we know um, what amount of money equates to um, a percentage, like 1% decrease in the spending increase? I can't believe I said that sentence. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Well, and right now. It's like, is it like okay, 100, so 120? What's 1%? Let's start with let's, that. Let's do 1%. Because right now. Um, like if we, of the total budget. Yeah. Just to give you an idea, I had used. A, Target number of a 5.9% increase. If we had to get to the 5.9% increase, I have on my little sheet that we would have to cut 552,000 right now okay. from our budget. But if you're just looking at a 1%, 1% yeah. of the proposed budget. Did you say 5.9 percent? 5.9 percent would be a total of 552,000 to reduce right now. Two
But we also entertain the conversation with the farm about the custodian and plus the project manager of any facility, uh, any uh, staff that's been shared. I know we've been discussing that quite a bit. That's all shared with the town. So there's no absolutely like me on them or you know, on us 100%. What about the project manager? That's, that's on the parish. That's so it's it's already shared with the town. So in addition to, do we have a summary somewhere of the other changes to the budget in addition to the new positions? So page, so the place we can. I don't have a summary. I did. I, I don't have to print it out, but I will get that for um, the next meeting so that you guys have so a copy. If the new positions are roughly a million, that means there's a roughly 1.1 million of other additions in the budget. I'd just like to hear a couple more opinions from the board on what those percentages should look like. From your own experience on the board and what you feel like the town could accept and so on. When will we know the teachers' negotiations results? Probably not in time. Because April 3rd is this insurance, so then I have to can we do it by then at least? At the same time. We're trying as hard as we can yeah. now, certainly. We're trying really hard. We're in negotiations right now. We have to have it before we deliver the budget to town council. It's, it's we have to have it. Today. We have to have it. So. Okay. We're so present as it is then. Yeah. Let's mm -hmm. see. Present as it is then. See what happens. So, what are your thoughts on percentage to take that? Um, and really what about that? Yeah, so just if, if six feedback. if six is too high, just for some people that I haven't heard from, you know, I would say okay, five point seven five, five point five, five point two five. But these are just arbitrary percentages. So, but I kind of well, feel like we come up with those percentages mm -hmm. and we see what see the what administration it what, what it means and what they can bring right. back to us. Okay, I mean, but right. still we have to think about what's the percentages. For them to come back with that you feel from your experience the town yet yeah, feel comfortable with right. that this would be right. a pill to swallow that I mean you can't make everyone happy but right 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 now it's um, you know just looking at this in some ways we do ourselves a disservice by buffering the tax impact because when you look at, you know across right. at the it's numbers amazing. it suddenly looks like we have a huge spike when it, I mean, it does go up, but it's it's not that we're doing anything different in our spending. It's just that we can't pull anything else out of the unsigned fund. Well, I mean, even if you look back to 2018, 2019, we had a really small um, spending increase, but we had a big hit from the state, and we still wound up with an 8.1 percent tax impact. So, I mean, it's it's. It's tricky. Mm -hmm. It's tricky. Yeah, just from my perspective, I'd like to see the ranges between five and six. Uh, you know, I look at those lower numbers, and it would obviously be great to hit those percentages. But again, like you really said, I think it's just unrealistic. It's important, I think, for people to understand why that's low. It would be we were pulling eight hundred. Thousand dollars going in, the unassigned fund or using that as revenue, four hundred thousand, four fifty, mm -hmm. and 
it's I, that's not a real number, right? But we, you know what I mean? Like we changed that number. If we were to, we could do that, but that wouldn't be responsible. From what I'm hearing, that what I heard at the beginning of the evening, right. the 100,000 is more in line with where we should be. Right. So it, it's sort of more fiscally responsible to have that kind of unassigned fund balance. We don't even have the. We money can't do it. And we don't have. 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 I have a question for you, Jeff. Oh, I must have. I, I texted you, but I guess you were. So, yeah, just to finish that. So, yeah, so we don't have that. And it's, and we don't yeah, we literally don't have it. Um, we have to build it up. And so it's skewed. Yeah. Yeah. So, sort of, the last few years, ours was more realistic. We can keep the level of use that we want to provide. We were kind of spending it in some years, just pulling it from the right. fund balance. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Five to six is that's what I want to see. Whatever chunks is that you but yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I I'm feeling like around five point five and somewhere and I don't need to be specific on, on either side of that, but that's <clears> definitely where where my you know, where I'm headed with that. Since you said it was a good guy, the town cost or some of the town hall is magic that happens between the yellow number and the green number. Well, no, it's what happens between our green number and the number that shows up on your tax bill. Correct. So, just as we are uh, obligated for uh, the principals in the schools and the education academics, we are also obligated to our citizens in the town as well. Mm -hmm. So, I would like to see the green number. And then the yellow can be any number that you wish, uh, but the green number should be somewhere around five, four. We should not be asking too much for tax because the bonds are on the horizon as well. We'll be asking for the citizen much more. Yeah, is that just I, and that will go down. That so also go down. Yeah, because this is not the number that will. So I wish I had my tax. I your tax bill, my tax bill, because and when we were sitting in um, finance committee. Um, Councilman Chris Straw explained it to me last year. It was great. Which was this 8.43% is not what is the actual percent passed on to the taxpayer. Correct. It's lower. But it impacts it. It impacts it, but we don't, I don't, I can't even, he explained it. It was interesting. I wish. But if, but, you, I look, think yeah, but if you look at the numbers, even though the percentage has gone up and down over the years, the amount, the medium home income amount is pretty much the same. Four and a half, four and eight, four and three. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the oh, you're, looking at the dollar you're looking at the dollar amount for yes. the median home. So I think I, I want to say this and. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Nasser. If we were to bring that green number mm -hmm. down to in the fives, like you said, I think that is going to be a completely different district than we can even recognize. I think that is not only not including these yeah, new the positions, but my guess is it might even be asking to cut current positions to go that low on that number. I, I think we need to be focusing up on this 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 yellow number. We can control our expenditures, and then it gets worked out in the transition with the town. I I, I think if you go and ask, am, am I? Does that make sense? That if yeah. we were to ask this green number to come down to 5.5, we're asking for a completely different kind of district. That is not in the expectations of the townspeople here. We wouldn't so recognize it. So this would be hard for us to, to figure, but she did discuss earlier that if you don't make any changes, don't accept the new positions, uh, the yellow number was going to be 4.3. Right. So when the yellow is 4.3, what is the green number? Do we know that or do we not calculate that? Um. <coughs> I'd have to look 
feel like I have to research. Yeah, I have to get back and research that because I don't want to try to do it on my phone right here. Um, I was just trying to do some difference right here really fast though between the relationship between the two directly. Um, can I speak while you work? Yes, go for it, Heather. <laughs> so I guess if, if we're looking down again at that green number, right, yes, our taxes are going up. There's been an increase. Um, and so if you, if you lower the yellow number, let's just say two percentage points from 7.9 to 5.9, right? Right. That's going to end up lowering the greed number, right. and that's going to end up lowering how much an individual pays. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of a $379 change, it may be more like $300. Um, and we had a $323 two years ago, right? And $300 is a bit more than 185 from the year before, but it's not doubled, and it's bringing our contingency fund. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You have to be really I, careful about I appreciate your correction there. Our unassigned fund balance back to a healthy place, so that if we ever get to the position where the state cuts a million dollars and we get to a year like 27 or 2018, and we need to tap into a ton more, we will have it, mm. right? We, we need to build that up so that if something happens, right. what did you call it, Hope, our cushion? Shock absorber. Shock, shock, shock absorber. absorber. We need to build up that shock absorber. And right. this, this number of 379 is going to go down. Right. I don't think right. anybody on the board has said, we're just going to let it fly at 7.95. So I, I think that's a clear message so that the superintendent has already but heard. But five to six percent, like Bill said, I'm that's where you feel. That's where yeah. I, I think. Uh, I, I, but I think I want to address. So Nasser's making an interesting dollars. point around tax impact. Yeah. And one one thing I do want to address, and it doesn't show up on this. One of them shows up on this sheet, but there's another one that goes back a little bit further, which is why we have these continual conversations with town council is the year that, uh, it looks like 2017, 2018, the tax impact looks really small, doesn't it? Right. It looks tiny, and a lot of people like to perseverate on that. Um, yeah. It happened because we initially got a fairly steep cut in state revenue, and then after we had settled our budget and voted on it and everything like that, we got a little extra money than they had initially mm -hmm. promised us. We weren't allowed to put it into our budget. It went back to the taxpayers. And so, kind of, you know, after the fact, that tax rate went down. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to use that money. So, it, 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 that also is sort of an artificial, yeah. and it happened again, it happened another time, because I remember talking about this with John Christie and, and Michael Moore, like, this isn't, this is an artificially low number because we weren't allowed to put that money into the budget. It, it, it didn't even go into unsigned funds. It went straight back mm -hmm. to um, reduce the tax level. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as we decrease our percentage of change on the top, it will decrease it down. Right, so right. It'll, it'll probably take it proportionally down. I'm just kind of doing like a little whip around. Laura seems to feel comfortable with a 5 to 6% range. I think you'd want to break that down into like a, a few scenarios. Three scenarios would be good. It's three too many. Phil feels comfortable with that scenario. Well, do you, are you willing to go out on a limb with your opinion? Well, I um, I again, I don't, I don't know if like I don't like the idea of just arbitrary picking a, a number because it doesn't make sense. I want to have a, a reasoning behind mm -hmm. how I get at that number. So. I'm now understanding that these low numbers are artificially low because we were borrowing from tomorrow to pay for those years. Mm -hmm. So each year it looks like it was really around, it's roughly 5% increase. And it sounds like just keeping things status quo with the built-in teacher increases, we're looking at 4.3, uh, you know, 4 and change percent increase. So if we know we have to do that every year, on top of that, there's got to be some 
proven, uh, reasonable, you know, like what does it cost, what, how, how much does it cost to educate the children, and how much should that be increasing each year? There should be some logical formula. And I know that there's anomalies and things that happen in special needs, then it's change. But I would say every year we're going to be funding the schools uh, just as they were last year, plus that reasonable increase, and what, what should that increase be? And that's, if, if I felt like that was the number we got to, I'd say that's the number we present to the town. So I'm sorry that didn't give you any I would call. say, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that number? Who did that? Where is that number? Is that up for them to go back and take a look at the number to say, you know, what would be reasonable to, right, now based on being fiscally conservative, and then they're going to present, and then it's up right. to us to say, is that reasonable, or does that fit? But it looks like that's what we were being held to in the past. They're saying, oh, look, you only did 2.5, why can't you do that again? And we, that's because we artificially created those dollars. But if we're always following this formula, this is what it cost, cost last year, plus teacher increases, and then this reasonable increase that are there, and, and mandates, you know? So, so we need and to form we are for capitalism. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> we need to form for yes, yes. And that would be justifiable. It would be near. And it should never, and if it's, if it's 10% one year, that's so be it. That's what we ask be, And because it would be um, defendable. Right. right. We, that doesn't exist, like, though. Well, we, like, we sort of have, but our years go up and down. Like, this year we had an unusual amount of students come into the high school and we didn't think they were coming in. So, mm -hmm. And next year we have another um, group of them. So numbers go up, numbers go down. Yeah. And, so it's changed. and if that changes the cost, then so yeah. be it. Yeah. Right? So I think it's interesting. You make a good point. I'm not arguing your point. I'm just saying I'm sorry that doesn't exist. <laughs> and thank you for that. <laughs> so go, go home and make it. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I don't disagree with that at all. I just It's probably between 5 and 6 percent. I think that it's between 5 and 6 percent. It's justifiable. It is. And you need to research that whole thing. I'll, no, no, I'll check it out. No, 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 we're going to provide next year with the increases that we have to calculate. And that's 4.3. So, so that's 4.3. And then the 5 to 6 range, which we're asking for, is we can see what are we going to get in addition to that. Mm -hmm. and, and is that acceptable? Right? Is right. it what we want as an acceptable? Yes. And I think that's a reasonable way to attack it. Yes, because we have a baseline. We have a baseline, and then we have scenarios that we know will be provided to say, okay, that is acceptable or that is not acceptable. Like for example, we heard, I mean, from my perspective, we don't know what number of te additional uh, teachers, but we kind of heard the baseline isn't acceptable, mm -hmm. because that's the perspective, you know, some of our administrators. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be good to know that, okay, here's the baseline, we continue, that's probably not acceptable, but how much more can we afford to make it better? Mm -hmm. And there are some non-negotiables, like yes. Jason needs a teacher. For that class. That's right. So, so that's going to be a right. And so, if you flip to that, if you flip to that page, that one of the new pages, it's um, the newest new program and position proposal that we got tonight. Um, there, there are some non-negotiables in there. In special services, pretty much anything that you see in special services is non-negotiable. Um, yeah. It's we're bound by law. Um, we have a, a school board um, class size and teacher load policy that, that we take seriously. And based on that, Jason needs another classroom teacher. As Donna said, that's sort of a non-negotiable. Um, without being specific, there, to me, are other positions that are negotiable that might be nice but aren't you know, aren't going to um, be able to be funded, possibly. And um, but still allowing us to make gains in, in, in getting our staffing up where it needs to be in all the schools for the um, enrollment in the, the classes that we have. Mm -hmm. So, so like, it might be helpful to see, you know, just again, 
of pulling it forward baseline because I think it would be helpful to tell to talk to the taxpayers to say one of the reasons why we're going to increase is because if Jason could get the teacher, we'd be going above our policy on class size. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that people would understand. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to do that. So that's part of this whatever the increase. That's gonna be part that's of that. Part of the how we talk so about it. So I actually not want to see that built into the baseline. I want to show why we need it. Justify the increase. How far you want to? I can move to other people if you're unwilling to weigh in with no, either a range. I'm going to say five, five, five and a half, six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I would be on board with that. And I do think, um, uh, Donna, you have done such a great job communicating around the budget. I think that this um, is something that's going to need um, extra explanation of, you know, why if people are just looking at increases across the you know the past several years, why we're suddenly you know, obviously we're not deciding right now what our percentage is, but um, just going forward I think that there might be questions and resistance to <laughs> conversation about what we were talking earlier and you know how you were saying there are certain new positions that are being proposed that we will have to fill you know the classroom teacher in Pond Cove because of policy of classroom size but I would also like to think of this district as a district that has the vision to want to move forward and not just incorporate into the budget needs but things that help the district grow and expand and become better um, and just improve on what it already does so well. Um, and so I would like to have the philosophy of the board to also find a way to help support that and not just be status quo. And I recognize that there are times um, that might be tight and um, and that might not be possible, but it would be nice if that could be sort of in our wheelhouse of what we think and, and how we hope to um, vote for this budget with that in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I agree with the group. I think I would like to see that five to six range and see what it does. And how far beyond, you know, does it address needs and, and does it give us a little bit forward momentum as Heather talked about? Yes, yes, we're all waiting for David's breath. I've got a big picture answer and then I've, I've got a smaller picture answer that I'm quite confident of, but I have to confirm it with the four of the teachers. You remind us of the question. So, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been lobbying me. It's why, if, uh, if we're trying to offer French one, why are, why, are we, oh, yeah. why are we proposing two sections? So the big picture answer is this. We are staffed for 511 students. We're, sorry, we're broken record on this. We are staffed for 511, which is what we anticipate. We will have 553 next year. That is 42 additional students. At least... 39 of whom, I would guess, will be taking a language. They will likely be teaching, taking French, because this is a French year for the 8th and 9th grade. So that's, that's two sections of French. Our best forecast is, based on the information we're getting from the 8th grade, is that that would be one section of French 1, and one section of this intermediate French class, uh, which we've not offered before either, which we have offered in Spanish, which has been called in the past French or Spanish 1A, and it's going to be French Foundations next year. So quite, I'm remembering my conversation with Ali Williams, the chair of the World Health Department, from a week or two ago. She was looking at the numbers, and the prediction was we're going to have a need for two additional sections. And I'll also say, just if you look at the numbers in terms of the foreign language teachers, there are five foreign language teachers, four of them 
right now this year are either just below or above the school board's policy on student learning for teachers. There's one who's a little bit below, um, but next year if, if we if, if if we don't get all five of them, will definitely be above and considerably above the student learning for teacher. That's that's a certainty. Thank you. So I missed that piece. I think I was just thinking that we were trying to offer accommodate entry level French, but there is a significant need in wrong due to enrollment to have additional exceptions. Thank you. Sure. So if you ask my opinion about what to expect with our number, since you were wrong and I give my didn't give my number. Uh, I will say keep it as 7.95 contingent upon the benefit and salary because you you were hoping it was going to be you predicted for 10 percent right and I think it was definitely within the age of seven so we get some points from there and also the rest of the information will be on you Elizabeth uh, negotiating with the teacher salary salary. And I think we can get something from that. If we ask Donna and Marcy to work your numbers to bring this to 5% or 6% and Tuesday is the meeting of the town council? No. 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 We're meeting Tuesday. Oh, so the town council is not meeting Tuesday. No. Okay. no. So we need to deliver our budget to town council on... Um, We deliver it on the 15th of April. And that means that on Tuesday, April 14th, we need to adopt our final budget. And today is March 11th. We need to give a respectful amount of time to the administrative team to have these really tough conversations to be able to bring back to us on March 24th what it would look like with no, you have, you are suggesting no change. Um, I think the rest of us are suggesting show us some changes. Then we talk again. And by then we might have our ceiling of health yeah, we, yes. we will. By then we'll have our, we will only have the ceiling. We won't have our actual number. Yeah. But we will have the range in the state, which means we know it can't be higher than. Mm -hmm. And we can all cross our fingers and hope that that allows. The number's not 13. Right. If the number's 13, we're just like, oh. <laughs> but if it's 8, then Marcy can yeah. bring that number down, which then, you know, that means that we, we look at 6 from what the work that they did. We've got some savings from health insurance, and we actually, now we, we have a 5.75 without having to go any further. So the reason why I, I am so worried about going forward with just this is that I feel like if we wait for ne negotiations to be done, which Hope and Phil and I are working really, really hard. And it's a it's a large group and it does not move quickly. I can I would love for, I mean, you can talk about it a little bit. It moves incredibly slow. Because um, we're not just negotiating salary, we negotiate language parts of the contract as well. Um, so my worry is that if we wait for our actual health insurance <coughs> number, which we don't get until April 3rd, so on April 3rd we'll know our, our health insurance number for sure. We wouldn't be prepared. We wouldn't be prepared to, to do so. So, if we do cut teachers, right, to get the number to a, to a percentage, no. no, and then you by April 3rd, you find out from the insurance that you got money, do you come back over here and say, Okay, Jeff, we can give you this position back? Or so, these the none of these people, people exist yet, correct? So, we're not cutting any teachers, and we're well, not asking when, when everybody has to go around and ask for. Bring the number to five percent or six percent. Right. That's not cutting anybody. 
No. Are those including these ones? Are those those don't exist yet. Those so are new saying proposals. not are putting those in the budget. But well, we already know that that's 4.3%. Marcy told that on the floor. That's no, that if, doesn't include that. That, has not, no. that is not including that sheet at all. 4.3% is including. Does not include this. Right. No. no. And the 7.9 includes this. Yes. We don't want to just say cutting teachers because that sounds like, you know, especially it's to the actual public, people. The optics, it sounds really like we're cutting. We don't want that, you know, misinformation. The yeah, idea is that potential. we have to figure out what we can afford to add is how I would like to yeah, well, that's what Right? So, what we can afford to add. These, that sheet that you have are proposed additions. Correct. And so is, we have to figure out what we can afford to add from that list. And we're not going to make those choices. We let them make those choices. So this sheet proposed positions is 7.95%. Yes. And we have asked Marcy and Donna to reduce the 7.9%, right? In order to reduce that, you gotta not entertain this, right? Yes. If we do not entertain this, we already know the number, it's 4.3. Right. But we're not asking them to reject, we're not saying we reject Every everything. Not, well, and they make the decisions so we want to take. They, 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 they did a beautiful job of explaining that there are certain positions that, like special ed. We have to be done. No, that's going right. to have to stay. But yeah. there are other things on that list that, that the principals and department heads will then negotiate over and say, you know, math and science is a, is a major yes, but this may be a no, and they will work together in their So group. that's something Donna will work with, with the staff. Right. And they work on that's that. That's what's happening with, with on Tuesday. Tuesday. And that's what's happening, that's on, Tuesday. What's happening on Tuesday. And it gives, the reason I added this meeting and I don't have the power. I asked people to have this meeting. Is because I really feel like we need to be respectful to our administrators to give them the time that they need to do that work. Because they could they could bring that five, five and a half and six back to us and we might say, no, none of those work. We need to see <clears throat> six and a half and we need to see five. And then they go, I hope that's not the case, please. Oh, they love to me. I'm, I'm telling did. you right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So true. So, so Please, true. please. <laughs> we really hope it's not going there, but I'm, we're, I'm just sad, sort of. <laughs> um, but we, I feel like we need to be respectful in case, what if, what if the health insurance ceiling comes back at 12? Oh, yeah, right, right, right. And we need to be prepared for that. So, I, like, we need to have time. And we have to have a starting point somewhere. We have to have somewhere the incredibly yeah. rational number that Hope wishes for doesn't exist. And so we have to somehow just start somewhere. To make it But I guess also, Master, like this number, we know what this looks like. And, and we have this ability that to start with. And if we come back with the five, five and a half, and six, and we don't like any of those options, and we, we have the ability to vote for this. Like, we know that information. Or six just, and a half. Or six and a half. We're just saying, okay, what are other options? Can you give us more to work with? This doesn't necessarily have to go away if that's, if that's in, you know, in the conversation. It's, it's, yeah. it's still there. Well, we're just, we're I, just, I just thought once we subtracted, then it's gone. Mm -hmm. Even no, with the funds available, then it's gone. Can't touch it. They, no, they no. will. They will go in and, and look at different options. So last year, somehow we got. I guess it was our insurance went down farther than we thought, and and so we did add something back in um, when we found out what our final insurance amount was, and we were still able to stay below six percent, which was our comfort point last year. <coughs> Does that um, sound reasonable to you? Yeah, because it's negotiable to uh, March, April 15th, the grand council meets. I was going to say, the go-no-go -no -go day is really um, the 14th of April when, this, when we adopt the budget. Then we deliver it the next day, and um, we begin preparing our presentation to the town council. 
but I think it, it's kind of irresponsible of us to say on April 13th, hey, administrators, bring us a new version of the budget. That's sort of why we're having so excited about that. He's like, I love all nighters. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw you, you were like, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's kind of why we're just having this conversation now. People feel all right? We're ready to go. And you feel you have clear guidance? Yep, thank you. All right. Um, I've lost my sheet where I say all the things. Oh, public comment. We need public comments. Um, so I really appreciate the robust um, conversation around this, and I appreciate everybody's opinion. Um, thank you, everybody, for being willing to weigh in. It can feel really uncomfortable um, talking about this, and it's hard. It's hard, especially sitting here with our administrators who we respect so much and we appreciate all of the hard work that goes into your job and preparing the budgets. But in the end, it's, it's that hard conversation that we have to have. And, you know, further conversations will not necessarily be easy, but we can be honest and um, respectful. So I appreciate that that's how we did it tonight. Um, before we close, is there... Um, a member, and we only have one member of the public. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to comment at this time? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Sonia Medina. Um, I am the uh, at large representative for the union, and I also teach French and Spanish uh, at the high school. Uh, I live in Portland. Um, there was a lot of conversation about the proposed um, new positions and um, Something I think important that you mentioned was about um, when making choices uh, to be careful not to change the school. And uh, I would say to be very careful not to change the school DNA, the culture, the identity, because um, there are some programs like, you know, foreign language, of course, at, um, that starts at Pond Cove. Um, that over the years, even though it had started in earlier grades, students have lost some contact. And uh, you have to think, I think it's important to keep in mind, uh, if literacy or math were taught um, two times in out of a six day rotation, where, where would our student be at the end mm. of elementary school? And so if we want to reach a certain level of proficiency, the more contact you have regularly is really important. And it's amazing already what our teachers are able to do at Pond Cove and the middle school and at the high school and still have students who perform. But I'm not sure that sometimes the, uh, the community understands um, when students are taking a foreign language early on uh, that they do not meet a teacher regularly. And so that's also a conversation to have. But when adding, adding new positions, uh, it's very important to keep in mind the culture of our school and its DNA, um, not to change that. Because as Heather said many times, it would really change totally what we look like and who we are. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, if... Um, Board members have any uh, questions or comments that they would like to have answered next time. Um, we, we keep the questions rolling, it's fine, but try to submit those to me via email by um, Thursday, March 19th, because our next budget workshop will be on Tuesday, March 24th. At 6.30 p.m., we will be back in the high school library, if I'm not, okay, excellent. That's what this says. So. Um, and our topic for that meeting will include um, just examining the different scenarios of revised budgets that the superintendent brings back to us. So with that, I thank everybody and good night.